So we've been uh, really focusing a lot lately on more of kind of outbound marketing with emails and, and invitations with events with Whiteboard Wisdom and, and also just with, uh, with blog posts and stuff like that. And it really got me thinking about, you know, what makes people react to a message? You know, whether it be a sales message, whether it be an invitation, you know, what, what gets people to, to react? Because I've noticed when I get, you know, invitations or emails in my inbox, there's certain things that I'll respond immediately to. There's certain things I'm like, well, eh, maybe. There are certain things I'm like, delete. And anytime if there's a kind of a consistent pattern in behavior, I always want to try to figure out what's causing what's causing that uh, that behavior. And so it really, what I came up with is there's really kind of a few different categories that it can kind of fall into. Is you know you've got a lot of times where you've got one person sending a message to one per to one other person. So you've got kind of a a, a one to one. And so what happens here is that you've got an, a personal invitation, you've got a personal message sent from one person to the other, and what happens a lot of times is this, this time of relationship and, and the confidence and the, uh, the ability of this person and this person's kind of a relationship is what, what kind of uh, makes that go or not. Uh, so it's really, you know, if, if you invite somebody to go to something, if you trust this person, you're going to go because they've personally invited you. You know, you've probably seen this when you get an, invita an email from somebody like, hey, thought you'd really enjoy this, would like you to come. Or a lot of times this comes in way of uh, a referral of some sort of, hey, I went to this restaurant and it was really good. More often than not, if you trust this person, you have confidence in what they're doing, what they're talking about, you're most, more likely than not going to go to that or you're going to try it out. Then kind of the, the next level down is when you've got one person that sends out an email to a group of people. And so in, in this instance, it could be a blind carbon copy. It could be you get an email that has a bunch of people just listed on it. But in this instance, it's kind of a, a one to many. And now, not only do you have to have confidence in this person, so that kind of comes as uh, you have to trust this person because otherwise if it's a group email, you're more likely not to get rid of it. Or if they are at, at a group of people, uh, they're going to maybe take it, that, that referral seriously, maybe not. But there's also an element of what's the value involved. You know, how is, you know, what is this event going to be? What is the thing that you're referring? What is it about? Is there something that it's worthwhile for me? And when I say value, you know, that's, that's a combination of, of a couple things. Value equals the benefits minus the cost. You know, and so the benefits are what is it, what's in it for me? Am I going to meet some cool people? Am I going to learn some new things? Is it a neat speaker? Lot, benefits can come in a lot of different ways. Is it going to be something that's going to help me do what I do better? Cost also comes in a lot of things. There's a cost monetarily, there's a cost time-wise, there's an opportunity cost, you know, and there's, so there's lots of things like that. So the, a cost could be, well, I've already got something scheduled that time, so opportunity cost, I'm going to miss, I'm going to skip this as opposed to that. Could be the time commitment that it's a long event versus a short event. So lots of things come in that, that nature. So that comes to be more of an important piece here is that not only do you have to trust this person and that what they're sending you is good, but you also have to see a high value because it's not a personal invitation. Now it's just a group invitation. And it gets a little watered down at that point. And so then from there you've got to where it could be a, a lot of times uh, the emails that come from a company and so if it's, if it's not a personal uh, invitation from anybody, if it's just the company, so a lot of times you'll see this uh, in the from box, is if it's a company name as opposed to a person's name, sent out to a large group of people, you know, that brings a whole other different dynamic. And so at this point, you've got many to many. And what happens here is now not only is it 
kind of a faceless invitation, but it's coming from a faceless group. And so then you've got to have confidence in the company or in the group that's sending it to you. There has to be a high amount of value that you're going to get from the event. And it's got to be a very compelling message. It has to be a very compelling thing to do. So it's, it's much more difficult to get uh, an invitation or a referral or somebody to act. You know, this comes even with, with sales. You know, if you tried sending a blanket sales email, that's not going to be nearly as effective as a as a one-on-one -on -one email saying, hey, I'd like to meet with you, or a one-to-many even that's within your industry. But here when it's group-to-group -group or many-to-many, -many, it really has to be pretty compelling. Like, it's got to be something that you want to do, and it was just nice of them to make you aware of it. And so what we've really played a lot with, you know, the different things with whiteboard wisdom emails is, is trying to eliminate as much of the many to many as we can because we're still building the value the case for the value and as well as why it should be compelling to them so we try to move it up up the the ladder the the kind of the last section that that kind of comes in is when you've got you know another component of, of when you get from here to here of when things go viral you know, and when things go viral, what ends up happening is, is really at that point you've got many to many to one to one. And so what that means is there's initially some blanket thing that goes out, whether it be a video or a picture or what, whatever it may be, that goes out to a large group of people or whether it be YouTube or wherever it may be. But then what happens then is then this group of people gets it from the faceless group, but then it ends up going to where individual people start sending it to their individual groups. And so it goes from many to many to one to one. And then it really starts kind of building that whole uh, viral component to it. So if here you've got, in order to get people to make things happen, it's, it's the confidence plus the value plus it being compelling. Here, it's, it's kind of confidence times value times compelling. And your target audience, when it ends up happening, is when you, when you get to your the large group and how many people are actually coming. So you've got here times your market across all of these four. And that's kind of where you get your, your reach, is the value that you can provide in each of one of these and uh, multiplied by the market reach, and, and that's what you'll end up getting. Because one-to-one, -one, you can get a much higher conversion ratio, but the reach of how far you can make that go with how many people you can do that with is lower. Whereas here, with many-to-many, -many, it's higher number of people but the, the confidence, the value, and the compelling nature of it is, is probably going to be a little bit lower, so your conversion ratio is going to be lower. And this, this is where you know, they say that there's things that you can do to try to make things more viral, but you can't make something viral. And obviously, this is the holy grail of market reach, but it's really, really tough to do. And so when it comes to really focusing in on how can you leverage these things, it's coming back to, you know, if you've got... Your uh, you know one to one. You've got one to many. You've got many to many, and you've got many to many to one to one. Is the key is to try to drive down as far as you can and make it as personal as possible to make it feel like it's more personal to the people as and therefore more relevant. Because if you can get what would be construed as a many-to-many -many, uh, email to look like it's a one-to-one, -one, then you can be building that case for the confidence, the value, and the compelling, but with that personal touch that makes it look like one-to-one. -one. And so there's lots of ways that you can do this with, with email marketing especially, is, you know, and that's what we've been experimenting a lot with recently, is having it look like the email that goes out like a traditional e-blast, e make it look like an actual email 
that's addressed to the person and has an actual email signature. And then you have to make a case for the value and make it a compelling message that's specific to that group of people that they want to do. And that's the same thing with sales, is as we continue to grow and we continue to market our services uh, to a bro broader group of people, and we start marketing in a way that we're trying to get conversions, we want to try to drive this value uh, up to being as close to one to one as we can, but at a minimum be one to many. You know, it's not until you've built a major large brand can you effectively pull off many to many you know and so this comes to if you know if, if an apple or southwest airlines or companies that you're uh kind of indispensable companies that you are always doing a part of whatever they are that's when you can respond to many to many but it takes time to to build that trust and to build that confidence with the group earlier on it's with the, a, a specific person you know, and so that's where uh, you really want to try to drive as far up into one to many and one to one as you can with all sales and marketing messages to try to get people to act. Because that's really all sales is. You know, when you're inviting someone to an event, you're trying to sell them on the fact that they should come to this event uh, as opposed to do something else. So the opportunity cost of doing something else.